Hello. So this evening we're going to prepare the plums because I've decided to make jam, but I'm going to do that tomorrow because now it is a bit too late to be making jam. So the purpose of doing this now is because it's quite warm. Well, it's not warm, it's quite humid. I'm worried that if the plums stay on the side for much longer, they're going to go a bit funky. So now I'm just going to make sure that none of them have gone off and that they're all quite, you know, prepared for tomorrow and that none of them have any creepy crawlies inside, which I have found a few thus far. So I'm just going to chop them up and then put them in the fridge and then going to make making jam tomorrow. So yeah, I'm going to cut them into quite small chunks so that when I do make the jam, it's not, um, it doesn't end up with massive chunks in it because while some people do enjoy that, I'm not one of those people. So if you do want to, if you do enjoy a more chunky jam, then don't cut them up as small. But if you're more like me and prefer a smoother jam, then chop them up. In the cooking process, they will kind of get smaller and not disintegrate, but kind of meld into the liquid more so. So it's not too important, but it's just more to taste than anything else. So we're almost at a, ki a kilo of plums, so I'm only going to do a few more and then I'm going to call it a day and with the other ones that are remaining I'll probably make a pie or preserve them in a different way but for now I'm only going to use about a kilo of plums for the jam so the other ones will just have to stay as they are and I'll just put them in the fridge in a separate bowl but um, it's a decent yield from my granddad's garden, so I'm very pleased with it. So hopefully this can make a nice um, portion of jam. I've never made plum jam before, because I've never had a yield. So we shall see how it goes. Hopefully it goes well, and hopefully it's nice, and I can continue to use plums from my granddad's garden and make preserves that I can enjoy with my family for the winter to come. So we're at the point where we're going to actually be making the jam. So this is the day following when I cut the, the, the plums up. I actually decided to use all of them. So this is 1.7 kilos of plums. We're going to put them in the bowl. They've gone a bit moist in the fridge. So not great, but it could be a lot worse. It's quite a lot, which is very cool. Um, so what we're going to do with them is turn the heat on and we're going to add 1.125 millilitres of water. And then we're going to stir this and the fruit will eventually start to cook and like reduce down. Then once we've reached that point, we're going to add the sugar. But first we need to let this reduce. Now that we're at this stage with the jam, it's time to add the sugar. This is a lot of sugar, which is why we only eat this sort of food in moderation, because it'd be an issue otherwise. So you need to wait for this to dissolve completely. It may take a while, maybe quite fast, so we'll see.
as well as the sugar, we're going to add a squeeze of fresh lemon. Careful of the seeds, you don't want those in the jam. So what I have here is a little dish that has been in the freezer for about 10 minutes and we're going to do the little plate test which is when you get a tiny little bit of your jam, you put it on the plate and you do the wrinkle test and you leave it for a moment. and then you push it with your finger to see if it wrinkles. Mm. It's not wrinkling, so it's not ready yet. Once you're at this stage, you have to be very, very careful because you're getting the jam into your jars. But the jam is very hot and it will burn you something dreadful if you get it on your skin. So be incredibly careful. These jars have been sterilised, they've been through the dishwasher and they've also been in the oven at 120 degrees for about half an hour. So they should be perfectly clean and shouldn't risk any bacteria or anything grow nasty growing in them when the jam is ready and in the fridge. You want to leave a little bit of a gap at the top and then apply your lid.
In reality, I prefer these jars compared to these ones, but I've only got two small ones at the moment because the other ones are being used for a cherry jam that I made recently. So more of these jars will definitely be on the next on the list of things to purchase next. I think the size is more convenient for like more everyday use and they're just prettier, more convenient than these big ones. You can tell when the seal has popped on these as well because you can just push the top and once this no longer presses down then you know they are completely airtight and sealed and that they are good to go. Because this is very hot still you don't actually need to can it in a hot bath. I mean, that is an option that you can do if that is something that you prefer, but I found this method is just as good and I've never had any problems with it. So there's nothing to be concerned about. That's how jam's done. So I'm going to leave these on the side to get airtight and then once they are they're going to go in the fridge but they can also store at room temperature which if it is easier for you. They are delicious, or they're going to be delicious and they're going to be a wonderful addition to our morning breakfasts. So if you attempt this recipe then I hope you enjoy it as much as I'm going to and best of luck to you.